Hey, y'all. Hold on, let's turn that intro, y'all. We're going to get it cracking, man. They tried to ice the kicker. They tried to ice the kicker. And the ancestors are looking out for us. Todd Hayes is exposing them, man. Let's okay, you see that chair right there? See how big it is? Yeah. Now look at the poke chair under. Scroll down, look at the poke chair under. Never yeah. have it been made yeah. so clear. Young TV. Young We running the game right TV. now. to take over. We hotter than the game. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you're just not tuned in, share like on your Instagram, Facebook. If you're tuned in, we broadcasting live from 2030, baby. They making it, they making it hard on us. They're trying to ice mm-hmm. the kicker, man. So they must right. be a powerful because I, I, I tell you, uh, I had a lot of dreams. I had a lot of dreams lately, like about this class and about it's something about this class, man. That's supposed to come. This class is supposed to come out because I got a tape that's coming out called News uh, Court, and it's gonna line up with this tape. And it's got this uh, the picture in the background on the TV screen on New Rule. It's gonna be tight. When y'all see this new type, this new uh animation that I'm doing, this movies, I'm putting a movie together to right, right now called uh News Court. And it's, it's probably gonna drop tomorrow. I'm, I'm really done with it. I just gotta do more editing to it. Yeah, but this tape, this is supposed to happen, face. I seen this in a damn this is deja vu or something, man. And it, and uh, it's 9-Eleven when we start. And uh, man, we could just bite right down into it. I know you like to take questions. You want, uh, matter of fact, before we get started, hey y'all, uh, let me show you this flyer. Right, uh, it's Christmas time, y'all. And Faye's got ten books right out. We're gonna sh- uh, show you that uh, flyer we got for you. If you want to get those ten books, all you would do is send a donation to the Play for Change Cash App. Make sure you leave your emails in the links in the descriptions if you want to get the books. Right. Now you're gonna get ten books. You're gonna have uh, another book coming out uh, um, here soon that he's working on. So stay tuned for that too. Um, if you want to get those books, the ten that he already got, all you would do is send a cash out to Play for Change, right? We're gonna pull that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, this computer right here. I might do. I don't know what the hell. They trying to stall us. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Come on, pull it up. Yeah, play for a change. It's P L A Y, right? F O R C H A N G E S. I mean, uh, G E. Play for change. I'm gonna pull it up right here, and it's already independent. And we're gonna be dropping it every five minutes in the chat for the people that be asking. We're gonna have it every minute, every five minutes in the chat, right? So if you wanna get those books, like I say, make sure you leave the emails in the link. Now, some people are saying they aren't, they got, they haven't got the books yet. It's only because we got a long list. So we're going down the list. You're going to get them because I, I, I hear the people that said they didn't get them. They come back later and say, oh, yeah, well, I finally got them. I'm, I'm reading them. Uh, some people cracking that shit open. Like, they get going right down to it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why this fly is not. What the heck is going on, man? This is crazy. Yeah, I really want to say I appreciate everybody. See, y'all see this? See how they trying to start? 
How my is my sound working out, Elder? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. You clear? I just wanted to say to everybody that I appreciate y'all. I know sometimes it, sometimes it's like a lot of books to go out, which I'm grateful for. So it's like you know, or a lot of times is you check your spam folder. I don't know why it's like that, but a lot of times they send the books to people's spam folder, so they think they didn't get them, but they'll be in the spam, you know. But just sometimes it's just mm -hmm. it's a lot, a lot of orders, which I really, again, I really appreciate that. So thank y'all. Yeah. And this right here is the flyer for the 10 books. Like I say, make sure you leave your emails in that link. And this is the cash app right here at the bottom. Like we said, we're going to be posting that every five minutes in the chat. And it's also in the, uh, the pending. And it's going to be in the comments after the show uh, pending. So you can't miss us. You can't miss us. All right. So let's get it cracking. Hey man, they've been waiting on this one, Phase. We got a lot of uh we got a lot of comments. We got a lot of uh people saying the 144,000. Mm -hmm. Uh like we're getting close to 2030, you know what I'm saying? Yep. 2043 is like right around the corner. It's like we, we, we in the crunch time. So we gotta yep. get the get to the bottom of this. Uh what's going like who gonna get picked up or what is this about? The 144,000. So I guess my first question, and we'll take questions from the chat too. My first mm -hmm. question is. Could you give us your overall perspective on the hundred and forty-four thousand? Because my, I got, I got, it's, it's, it's different ones to me. I, I heard different perspectives. I like the Bible uh, pickup joint, and it's we can go into it. Actually, can go into more detail on that. But I know you got all this for us tonight. So mm -hmm. could you just go mm -hmm. in to build on us the origin of the hundred and forty-four thousand? All of this, right? Could you go in on that part? I'm gonna right. Up. Well, what most people are thinking one hundred forty-four thousand. You have a lot of people now, especially with all of like the neo spirituality and the different types of movements that are coming out lately. A lot of people are jumping forth to associate themselves with what is referred to as the chosen people. So you got a lot of people that's either associating themselves with being chosen or putting the chosen on their name, or they got chosen movements. You got some people doing chosen tours. But remember when Ye came out and was speaking about who the chosen people were, a lot of people jumped forth, especially the people who were in the conscious or the spiritual community, interestingly enough. And they were like, he, he talked about us. He talked about melanin dominant people, which we'll get into that, which that's not uh, true at all. You would not be saying that melanin dominant people were the chosen people. The only way you would say that is just out of the conversation of figuring out that there may have been melanin dominant people at a set point in time that were a part of these tribes that would have been the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. So a lot of people think that that means that because those people may have been melanin dominant at that time or whatever the different variations of the melanin dominant gene, which would have brought you into the different tribe, like the Levites and the rest of these people. Right. Just because that would have been that time period's orientation of people doesn't mean that today that if you have melanin dominance or the melanin dominant gene or brown skin or coarse or fine hair or whatever, that that means that you're chosen. You understand? So then why why do people like the chosen aspect? The chosen aspect comes from or the idea comes from there being some type of destruction that's supposed to befall a place. Right. And because of that destruction coming to that place, certain people were to be spared. You understand? So as to preserve the nation or to preserve uh, that species or to preserve humanity with Noah's situation, like with Lot's situation. So certain people had to be chosen to be spared from that destruction or protected or saved or secured from that destruction, right? So people would like to be a part of that. A lot of people would like to be, a, most people would like to be a part of that conversation without even diving into what it actually is because it gives you this hint toward being saved, you know, and even though people, that's why I say it's interesting that people who were from the spiritual and conscious and neo-spiritual community were saying that they were of the chosen because that is a very biblical statement. You understand? And these are the same ones who will say that you're not supposed to read the Bible. And then you ask them, where do you get the concept of being chosen? And also, if somebody is being chosen, then you have to also look at the fact that someone is doing the choosing. So then you have to get into the fact and say, if you're chosen, who did the choosing? Now, Malachi had a question a long time ago. Somebody asked Malachi, you a long time ago. How do we know if we're part of the chosen ones? He said, you choose yourself. You understand? Because a lot of people think it just means that, oh, you're picked up because you, you know what I'm saying, dress a certain way or you believe a certain thing or you gave your life to Jesus. not what it means. They said many would be what? Called, all right, and faithful and chosen. So it's three different things. Many are called, few are chosen. But there's another one that says many are called, 
and faithful and chosen. They're speaking about the ones who actually walk with the Lamb. You understand? Because they said at one point that they were going to make war with the Lamb. And that they, the ones who made war with the Lamb weren't going to prevail. And they were speaking about the people who were with that Lamb. They were the ones who were called what? Called and chosen and faithful. So if you've been called, which is everybody, many, the multitudes, the masses of you have been called. How have you been called? Through different religions, through different stories, through different scriptures, through different whatever, kitab, different holy books, sifas, whatever. They've been giving you many books and lessons and teachings and supreme mathematics and elder teachings and Vedas and all this other stuff just to get you to be called. And then when you're called, you have a job to do still. You have to respond to the call. If somebody's calling your phone, that's not enough. You still got to pick up. You understand? And if somebody's calling your phone and your phone is on silent, you got another problem if you weren't paying attention to your phone. If somebody's calling your phone and your phone's on vibrate, there's too much noise around, you won't hear it. You understand? And then when they get on the phone, let's say if you got a job interview, somebody's calling you for a job interview. Okay, cool. They're going to interview you to be Job and see if you can pass the test. Are you with me? So then they call your phone, you get on the phone. If you don't know how to speak to them or to code switch, what the melanin dominant people say, what we code switch or speak job interview, all right, and you turn them off or turn them away, well, you just missed your opportunity to be selected or elected or chosen. You understand? So the whole purpose of the 144,000 conversation is to remind people of the fact that there's another type of, we can use the word covenant that is made with you human or us human beings that says we won't destroy all of you or they won't destroy all of the human beings. They say there will be times where a few people are selected an elite or elect few people are taken away from that destruction, all right, and then the rest of it is flooded out, okay? That's where you get into the movie Knowing and all those other, I love bringing up the movie Knowing. It's a real powerful movie. I encourage everybody to watch it, okay, because it has so much to do with what's been going on for the past 50 plus years, all right, and what's going on with your son right now and all these other things. But the point is, if you are of the chosen, somebody chose you. And if they chose you, they chose you for a reason, okay? You were called, you had to be faithful. You had to be full of that faith. All right. And understand what that faith actually meant, because a lot of these things you don't see. You may not know why, like in the movie, knowing the young boy decided that he wasn't going to eat meat anymore. Why did he decide that? He may not know why he decided that. He may not know why he's having visions. He may not know why this person gives him a rock or a stone and he decides to keep it. OK, there's a certain visceral component of the self that says, I have to have faith in this thing, even though I may not be fully aware of what it is, every time there's a new part of this faith being confirmed, now I can say, this is factual, okay? This will work, like with a lot of you, with your prayers. You may not know how and when or why your prayers may be answered, but you'll pray, and then as soon as it comes and manifests or appears in front of you, or God answers your prayers, is what you'll say from the religious community, now you can say you can have faith in God. Now, some people may not understand why you have faith in God. OK, but that's for you to have faith. They have another type of faith. Other people have and That's why you say you have different faiths, you understand, or different imams or imanis, OK, that other people are associated with where you may not understand their faith. But this comes into play when it's speaking about beyond what just your eye can see. That's why they say walking in faith and not by sight. So a lot of you may be looking to see, oh, the chosen look this way. No, the chosen don't just look a certain way. You understand? The chosen, act, they, they act a certain way. We carry ourselves a certain way. We're elect. Look at the word elect. You see electrified. We ain't going to be walking around like it's just a dull moment in life. We're not walking around wasting our energy away. We're electrified. We're ready to electrocute and do everything within this current, as in current, as in a moment, but current as in what we can use this energy for, a current, to charge this new reality. And we're going to do it. There's no such thing as somebody who is going to respond to the call and be full of that faith or that energy or that knowledge or that rule or that spirit. There's no such thing as us drifting away. We have a definiteness of purpose and we're going to stay on that purpose. So that means that like the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where the main character kept having these visions and these inclinations and these urges to put together, piece together this mountainous type formation and kept having people come to him and say that he was crazy. He was losing it. His family thought he was losing it. He wouldn't stop. He couldn't stop. You understand? That's why Pop said, you remember the movie Close Encounters? He said something's driving you to that ship. Now, a lot of you have tried to only allegorize the mothership, and that is an issue. A lot of you have only tried to allegorize the 144,000. We see all of that. 
We see your 72,000 plus 72,000 breakdown. We see you said there's 144 uh, chakras. We see you talk about that's just speaking about the wheels of the chakras inside of you. We see you talk about all of that, but you're forgetting that all of that within you, man, remember the maxim of Pythagoras. Okay, man, know thyself and you'll be able to understand everything that's happening in your reality with the celestial, the universe outside of you. You're forgetting that part. There's a mother plane that the Pentagon spoke about less than a year ago, and people don't know what they're speaking about. But Malachi York talked about it. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad spoke about it. You understand? So then you have a conversation of, can you only speak about the wheels within, or are you going to listen to people like the minister, or the minister, or the most honorable minister Farrakhan, when he speaks about what? The wheels. He spoke about the wheel that they found and saw over Lake Erie. You know what I'm saying? He speak about the battle of the sky. Okay, the battle of Armageddon. Okay, so if you're only out of horizon and not looking at the literal aspect of the fact that for hundreds of thousands of years, there have been recordings of vehicles that you didn't know what they were. You understand? That meant that people were flying them and you didn't know who they were. So then if you're going to dare call yourself a chosen one in the same conversation that we've been having, then you have to first be able to acknowledge who does the choosing. And that will be God or Allah to Allah or the Elohim or the judges or anybody other than just yourself. The only reason why the response will be that you choose yourself is because you've been called. And if you decide that you're not going to accept the mission that comes with that, what's referred to as a calling, then that is on you. That is what is referred to as your choice. And you have free will or not even free will because you get into the conversation of free will and people think that your will doesn't have a cost. No, your will has consequences or prosequences. Everything you do, every deed that you take on and put out has a prosequence or a consequence. No, it means that you have the willpower to decide to accept the mission or refuse. Remember the Mission Impossible movie. This is your mission if you so choose to accept. Choose, choice, elect. There's an election coming. They call it the election year. You understand? Where a lot of people are going to feel that they have to make a choice. You're going to have people literally launching campaigns, reminding people of how important it is to give people their vote. V-O-T-E, voltage, V-O-L-T. How long did it catch? How long did it take for people to catch that? I had to come out and tell people that. Say, look how long you've been saying vote. You want to vote for these people in the election, electricity. You want to give them, their, give them your energy every four years. Why? Just because they said you have to? They said, well, we need a president. Well, listen to what you're saying phonetically. You're saying you need a precedent. And every time they introduce a new precedent, you just agree with it. You understand? So then that's why I told people for the year 2024, especially being that it is the eight year, and if you did not know that, now you know. What is the eight year? The eight year will be speaking in terms of the genes. Are you with me? The eight, the genes. Why is it the genes? Because you're speaking about the double helix and the shape that it makes. If you go and type in the DNA emoji in your phone right now, you will see the letter of the number eight. You understand? But why is it important? It's because that double helix also shows up as a ladder, all right, or a structure of some sort. And in supreme mathematics, you have the number eight as build and destroy. And there are things that can build or upregulate your genes, and there are things that can destroy or downregulate your genes or your DNA. You understand? And everything of this conversation when it comes to being chosen has to do with your genes, all right? Your literal genes, your DNA. You cannot put on the garb of the chosen and play chosen. If you go read the book of Amos in the book, the Bible, which a lot of you people need to read if you're going to claim that you're having any conversation about the chosen ones, you better read that book to know what's actually being spoken of because it's speaking about extraterrestrial encounters, extraterrestrial intervention, you understand, extraterrestrial messages. They speak about it in the book of Amos chapter nine that there was gonna be a sifting that took place. All right, the Hebrew Israelites need to look, listen close because they said that sifting was gonna take place where you would not be able to act like you would have chosen. They were gonna come through and sift through the nations, literally. In the book of Amos, they said they were going to sift through the nations to find out who those chosen people were or find them and retrieve them, just like they did in the movie Noah. Okay, which means that not a single Hebrew Israelite has to come out and tell somebody just because they're a melanin dominant person that they're chosen or just because they're a melanin recessive person that they aren't. You don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is do the works of the ones who are electrified, and the rest of that will be done by Yahweh Shai and Yahweh. All right, excuse me, Jah or Yahweh. You understand? You don't, you human beings don't have the dominion over the rest of that project, which is called what? Save man or project save whoever the cho chosen people would be. So that sin thing takes place on what level? Well, you're dealing with sin thing where you have other groups of beings like the Greys 
who will abduct people and put them on these platforms and probe them and test their DNA. All right. What's to say that that hasn't that hasn't already begun? That sifting process hasn't already begun. Do you really know whether or not there are already extraterrestrials in your midst coming through your neighborhoods and your communities cloaked in clouds and while you're resting, performing tests on you or while you're in sleep paralysis, sampling your genes and looking at your recordings of your hands like al Quran said, your tongue is going to speak and tell on you. Your mouth is going to speak out against you. Your hands are going to speak out. Everything that you've done is recorded in your body. What do you call that? You refer to that as genetics. <laughs> you're dealing with the gene. You understand? So every time you make the will, listen, when I'm teaching and reminding people, really, I'm not, in, in, I'm not literally creating the form of will, but reminding people of the form of will that they have access to and the power that it comes with, every time you make a decision to not ejaculate, every time you make a decision to not overeat, every time you make a decision to do anything that requires discipline, you are programming your very temple. Are you with me? And you're affecting your genes in that regard. And that means that you're going to pass on that very willpower in the form of your genetic information to your offspring. And it also means if you look at the science of epigenetics, which epi just means above or on top of or encompassing, and genetics is just speaking of the origin, all right, which is ori is still saying the light of or my light, and it's also saying gene, which is gen, origin. So what's on top of or around or outside of the origin of yourself or the epigenetics, all right, when you look at that science, you'll find out that every time you make a decision to do something different in your reality, you start altering not only the environment, but you start being able to affect or influence other people that are around you. You understand? So you don't have to literally come in physical contact with a person to alter their genes. As a matter of fact, if you've been hearing our voices, okay, that's why you say, my sheep know my voice. If you've been hearing our voices, you're being led already. If you've been hearing our voices, you're being upregulated already. All right, that's why they tried to shut down certain voices where they said that Malachi was the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? They say Elijah has come and they know what it meant, they know what time it was, and they know about the replication of these stories where you think it only occurs one time that a Messiah comes once, or you think it occurs one time that Elijah comes once, or you think it occurs one time that Moses comes once. No, each and every one of your generations had somebody in that generation that held the place of all of these power figures. You understand? In many different ways and many more power figures that you may not know the names of or the tones to utter, but everybody has a job. Okay, now just because you have a job doesn't mean that you're going to do it. So what's the question or the answer to the question? The answer to the question is, if you're claiming that you're a part of the 144,000, the 144,000 is speaking to a people that have been selected or chosen for a purpose. Are you with me? Which means that it should be a part of your mission to find out who chose you. And if you chose yourself, then it should be the root of your mission to make sure that other people come in contact with who or whatever it is that set up the whole mission to begin with before you took it on as your own mission. You understand? So there has to be some type of humility that comes with being a part of 144,000. You're not walking around just with your chest out talking about some, I'm of the chosen. You know what I'm saying? You're not walking around with your chest. You're not throwing around like it's some idea badge, okay, to jump into people's faces. No, you're dealing with a conversation of you cannot even play like you're chosen. So you think you're fooling them, but you're not fooling anyone. You won't be able to put it on. If they come through and say, we need this type of, this, if they say they want O positive blood, that's what they want. You understand? If they said to preserve your genes and don't mix in with all the rest of these people, then your ancestors should have listened. And if they did not listen, then you have no right to be able to just call yourself the chosen ones. You understand? If they didn't listen, what am I speaking about? I'm speaking about Deuteronomy and all of the rest of the repetitions of laws that they gave people to say, don't do this, do this. They didn't tell melanin dominant people that they were going to be in, they were going to be cursed inevitably. They said if you don't listen to this, then you will receive a curse. So don't tell me Deuteronomy was a prophecy. It wasn't a prophecy. Deuteronomy was a warning. All right. And if you really look at what Deuteronomy will give you, it'll give you the word what Devari, okay, which is to say words. So if you're asking what were the words at that time and did the people listen, okay, you're saying that the words were of structure and order of how to maintain whatever this gene was. OK, which would have had to been a similar conversation to Genesis chapter six, verse nine, when they decided that Noah was perfect in his generations. Generations. Go look it up. Genesis six, nine. That after they decided at the Genesis six, six and six, seven, when they decided what? What? The man has become too violent. OK, it repented God 
or the Lord that he made man. He said, I will destroy mankind who I created off of the face of the earth. You understand? But they said they found what? That Noah had favor in the eyes of the Lord and decided to save him. But they told you why in Genesis chapter six, verse nine, they said he was perfect. Okay, which will give you the word Tamim. He was perfect in his generations. Okay, so that means that he was upright for the time being. And it could also mean, if you're listening in, that he had perfect genes, which wouldn't be something that's confusion when you look at the story of Batanosh and you look at the story of Lamech. All right, which you go into the Lamech scroll. Batanosh and Lamech had a situation where Lamech was gone for a set time period and he returned and Batanosh was with child. You know what I'm saying? And Lamech started doing the math. He's like, I've been gone 11 damn months. How the fuck do you have a baby? You understand? And they were already having to explain to Lamech, put them on, on, on key about what was going on. They said that the guardians came down, okay, and had to do what's called artificially inseminate Batanosh to place a baby in her womb. That baby became Noah. Are you with me? Now, when they described Noah, they described Noah similarly to the description what they said in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14, okay, when they were speaking about somebody who glowed, had fire or 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 nod or nord or nord coming out of his eyes, you understand? And he had the white hairs or hair like lamb's wool or hair white like lamb's wool. That's very important that you note that because in Revelation chapter 1, 14, they're saying that. And Daniel 7, 9, they're speaking about hair that was like wool. You understand? They were speaking of the texture, but they were speaking about the color, which is very important because it gives you a hint toward Noah's story or Utnapishtim story. Okay, because Noah was also said to have glowing skin, white hair, and fire or light coming out of his eyes. This is some type of gene that came from whoever these guardians were, okay, that also had that similar type of genetic makeup that allowed for them to have a bioluminescent genetic makeup or a bioluminescent epidermis or skin. You understand? Know a layer, outer layer of skin. So if you look at what I'm saying, what I'm saying bioluminescent, literally saying that they were living with the light. They had a glory about themselves or a radiance about themselves genetically. So either their molecules were just moving that fast or they were programmed to appear as such. That when you saw them or beheld them, you literally saw that they were glowing, which is why you may have been looking at those depictions of those angels with radiance or a holler or an aura or a light coming off of them. You understand? Now watch this. If that was Noah who went on to beget who? Shem, Ham, Jephthah, and it gives you the story of who all these chosen people were supposed to be at the, the salvation of Noah. Okay, when Noah was saved, or Noah was a, one of the original chosen ones. Okay, when the first destruction came by water, all right, or Ma'in. Okay, they took Noah, they saved him. He was chosen. And they saved his family. They were chosen through Noah. Are you with me? And then these new generations of people came. So then somebody in this room or on his live or somewhere on the planet Earth should have the same type of genealogy that they could trace back to or ancestry they could trace back to or even etherology, because we'll get into that, that they could be able to trace back to to say, I have this bioluminescence somewhere in my genes that says I'm related to him. What's my point here? My point here is not enough to say that you're just the tribes of Israel. All right. Even though I know the Hebrew Israelites would like to believe that. OK, you wanting to be a part of the tribes of Israel don't have anything to do with whether or not you are. You understand? And even if you were supposed to be the tribes of Israel, that doesn't mean that you were responding to the call. So because you have not been able to do the ancestry, which means you haven't been able to go back in time and compare the dates. All right. Look at these time periods, century after century, decade after decade. You haven't been able to go back and link yourself back to a man named Yakub or Jacob. All right or Israel, you haven't been able to do that. So you have not validated for yourself the truth of your being an Israelite, okay, or Israelite through ancestry. You haven't done it through genealogy. I spoke to one of the Hebrew Israelites. They said the shit was impossible. I said, well, if it's impossible for you to do it through genealogy, then you should explain to me why you're out here telling people that they are something that you haven't confirmed whether or not it even exists for yourself, which means that you may have not come in contact with whoever those masters were, who Moses came in contact with or whoever those masters were who picked up Elijah or whoever those masters were who were guiding Yeshua. All right. You haven't come in contact with those beings. So then you only speak of, from your own folly. You only speak from your own lack of awareness. All right. You don't know whether or not you are part of this so-called tribe or flock 
or whatever you want to call it. So then you can't do ancestry. You haven't done that. You say you, you couldn't do genealogy. You haven't done that. All right. So then you're left to lean on what you think is spirituality, which would really be the etherology. OK, if you look at the acronym of what I'm giving you, I'm giving you ancestry, genealogy and etherology age. OK, which tells you that time has passed age, A-G-E. Remember that, because if you're dealing with spirituality and what they say, well, if people if people just have a good heart, then they can still be a part of that. You know, what I'm saying our, our chosen people or they just have a good heart. They can still. That's not what they were saying. They were saying that they had specific people who were a part of the sheep. All right. Or the part of the ones who would walk with Christ. And then he said, what I did have, he said it in John chapter 10, verse 16. He said, other sheep I do have. I do have other people who may not know who they are. He said, but I had to, he had to bring them. He said he had to bring them together, gather them together as a conductor would. He had to gather those people together. Okay. But it does not mean that they were going to do the works that were necessary to be able, like, you can lead the horse to the water, but you cannot make them drink. Are you with me? So here's the truth. In all actuality, if you ask anybody from the Hebrew Israelites, Captain Cesare, all the rest of these people, the Christians, the Muslims, whoever, ask anybody, have they yet come in contact with any of the angels, Malaika, extraterrestrials, whoever, Elohim, Nataru, Astronuabians, and Asabians, have you come face to face with any of the Najaru or the overseers? All right? If any of these people were to be asked this question, their truthful answer would be no, which means that they have either been called another type of way, which we'll get into that, if they feel they're chosen. They have to be faithful enough because they haven't come in contact with these people to be able to say it's deep, deeper than faith. Now they know who they are. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have faith to a certain degree to even call yourself chosen, whoever you are, whatever group of people you are. All right. And then after you've been called and faithful, all right, and you've been chosen, then comes the part where you're taken up and brought to higher levels or higher planes. But that's a higher work. It's literally a grander work. You, you Are you with me? So the point is, if you're saying you're other 144,000, then there's a certain amount of work that you would have had to do up to this point, all right? And if you're claiming that you want to be a part of that, then there's a certain amount of work. So then deal with it like this. Remember the movie Knowing. Let's go to that scene in the end where Caleb, it's very important that we remember this word, Caleb, because... It is a name that appears in the book of Deuteronomy chapter one. All right. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter one, verse 36, you'll see it. Okay. And this is literally starting off with saying, save Caleb. And by save Caleb, they were saying, accept Caleb. But the word appears as save. So remember Caleb, because that was the name of the son in the movie, knowing who was saved. Are you with me? Now, the father of Caleb, the parent of Caleb, okay, which would have been an ancestor of Caleb, did all of the works to help Caleb who was supposed to be that child of salvation, get to that point where they were able to be saved, all right? Yet he himself was not allowed to ascend. He himself was not allowed to be a part of the 144,000 or chosen. Why? And they asked, he said, what? He said why, why can't I go? He said, only those who heard the call. You understand? And to hear the call is to aid and assist and the development of the plan that helps whoever would need to get there to that point of redemption, are you with me, to be able to get there and carry out that plan. So what's my point? Would you be able to say that you are doing the works of the 144,000, yet still be able to accept that you still may be destroyed? Would you be able to say, oh, I'm chosen? Would you be able to say, oh, I'm a part of the, the, the 144,000? I'm a part of the lost house. I'm a part of the sheep that Jesus was talking about. I'm a part of the, the Mu'minun that uh, Muhammad was speaking about or the Mu'minati. I'm, I'm a part of this sacred group of beings or this salvaged group of beings. Would you be able to say that to yourself, do the works of it, and then come to grips with the fact that you still may face destruction? Whether they still decide that you will not be allowed to escape the fire? You understand? Would you still be willing to if you knew that it were possible that even with all of your works, what did they say? Let's say people say, I heal people in your name, Jesus. He said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. Now, that's not to say that you're workers of iniquity, but let's say, do you have it in yourself to still carry out the works if for nobody else, for your children's sake, like what they did in the movie Knowing, for the children's sake, will you put forth the works of the 144,000? Are you with me? Now, most people think themselves to be it. And you don't understand the whole point of us doing this is to make sure that the generations that come after us are not destroyed. You understand? Most of us have already become corrupt. Most of us have already taken the fruit. 
Most of us have already subscribed to or come up under the spell of Shaitan's world. And they're doing it proudly. Are you with me? Proudly as in they may not even know it's what they're doing, but they're doing it with pride. They won't listen to the wisdom when we speak. To say that family, you're aiding and assisting Bab. You're aiding and assisting Baphomet. You're aiding and assisting Set, which means that your works are too dark. And you may swear up and down you're doing light works. Yet, when I ask, who have you brought to the altar? All right, meaning who have you transformed? When you say the word altar, you're saying transformation. Who have you transfigured? Matthew 17, 2. Who have you changed? You feel what I'm saying? And the answer is nobody. Because the alteration doesn't mean to stay in darkness. The alteration means to do exactly what Jesus was able to do, which is to change a figure and literally shine. All right? So when they spoke of him being able to do that, it was either he was literally taking off a cloak or a bodysuit, or he was doing like they showed you in the movie Knowing, where at the end they were able to change their form from just a flesh, dense, slowly vibrating form, all right, to a higher or less dense, faster vibrating form, okay, which was that etheric being. Are you with me? So I know it sounds powerful. It sounds good to call yourself that. Just don't forget that if you're saying you are chosen, somebody has to choose you. And if you don't know who or what we're speaking about, then you have to do the faithful works, which is you have to be a part of the group of people who's working to not only find that out, but to do what they said do. How are you the chosen and you're not working to get 144,000 people like you together? where you're speaking of the elect. You understand? You talk about time speeding up. They said time was going to speed up in the book of Matthew. And they said that it wouldn't just speed up. They said it would be done. Time would be sped up. The days would be shortened for the sake of the elect. So if you're calling yourself the elect, then you should be looking for whoever the other elect are. And there's a passage, a whole passage that says that you're supposed to be gathering together to form a new sound, to sing a new song. There are works that need to be done. You don't just lay down in your bed or get on TikTok or get on Instagram and say, I'm chosen. There are works. You have to bring people together and they have to be able to create a sound that is a new sound or to form as if it were a new sound. You understand that only the ones who were chosen would be able to know. That's when you get into the telepathic communication conversation. The reason why Caleb was able to hear what the extraterrestrials were saying while they were standing in front of him. You understand? And his father wasn't. Are you with me? What's the purpose? Why was he able to hear it? Because they said God speaks into the hearts of men. God speaks into your heart. All right? God speaks into your mind. And that's important because you see images like E.T. phone home. He's pointing to the heart and pointing upward. The same signing that Jesus did. Are you with me? Look at those two images. Go find E.T. phone home images and then go look at Jesus' images pointing to the heart. And you're going to find the same images. Because we're speaking about that coherence and that activation, that ignition, literally what we've learned in the Rosicrucian orders, that ignition of the heart that allows for you to activate all of these different higher senses that you speak about. Your psychometry, your telepathy, your intuition being enhanced, your clairvoyance. You literally have clear vision, clearer vision than what you had before. Being able to see more and pick up on more than what the average human being can see and pick up on. Are you with me? So Caleb was able to hear and receive the telepathic messages, meaning he got the call the same way his father got the call. But he said only the ones who heard the call were able to ascend, which means that you still made it to that point. But you were not able to hear the call. Why was he not able to hear the call? He had not yet been genetically upregulated to the point of being telepathically inclined. Can you fake telepathy? No. And even if you thought you could, if somebody is sending you a cold, all right, and this is the test that they're using to figure out whether or not you've shedded this much dense reality or this material plain body that you've been given, if they're testing you via telepathy and you're not able to respond or pick up on a message, then you are not needed. This is why Melikai York was explaining that the homo erectus isn't needed in the new plane or in the new world. Those who cannot hear are not needed in a new plane or in a new world. Only those who are able to hear. This is important. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 36, and you will find that they have been told to go up to a certain point, all right, and go where the Amorites, rest of people were, and, and take the land. And they were saying, yo, you sending us out to this place, but they already told us these beings are giants or taller than us, and we know the Anakims are out there. 
You understand? And it was being said that God was pissed off because first of all, he was like, yo, didn't I show you? He said, didn't I guide you by night? You understand? And didn't I lead you in the daytime via a cloud? They were speaking about a craft, by the way, because he didn't just say, didn't I guide you by night? They said by light at the nighttime or by fire. You understand? Meaning these were starships that were guiding these people. He said, I went ahead of you and told you where you could set up camp. And, and now I'm telling you to go and take your land, which is supposed to be yours, and you won't go. You understand? So he did not allow for them to inherit the land. Keep in mind what I'm saying. He allowed Caleb to go and inherit the land. So in the movie, knowing what happened, they allowed for Caleb and the other girl, I can't remember, I never remember her name. The other girl who was with him, they allowed them to ascend. They gave them white rabbits, symbolic of the fact that what? Time had run out. Remember, in the movie Alice in Wonderland, the white rabbit had a time clock or a watch, a pocket watch, and was saying what? I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. And Alice was like, it must be awfully important. Yeah, it was important because that date, keep in mind what I'm saying, lined up to that same situation or synopsis where the young girl who was Lucinda, the one who bore, who bore the light, was able to interpret all these numbers and calculate and form all of these prophecies, which they call predictions, and put all these numbers on a page which look just like the numbers that they show you in the Matrix movie, which is based off of the green light, stay with me. And from her putting all those numbers on the page, Nicholas Cage, the character, whoever he played, I can't remember his name either, but the nigga who was able to play the character, Nicholas Cage, was able to go and look at her prophecies and find not only the dates, but also the locations of where certain events were going to take place it's called prophecies. Are you with me? And through those prophecies, they were able to find that there was going to be a time where everybody had to be judged. So all these people who died in like the plane crash in the movie and the subway incident, they were having their judgment earlier on. This is symbolic. But there's a day called the day of standing, all right, or the day of recompense, or the day of judgment, or Yom Muthin, where everybody has to be judged. Are you with me? And that judgment has already taken place before where they judge the planet according to these stories, if you subscribe or not even subscribe, if you know about these stories enough to look into them. These stories said that there were destructions that took place before, and there was a mass destruction that took place with the flood. That was a judgment. And from that judgment came destruction by water. Now, who among you can evade or avoid the destruction by fire if that fire that you're speaking about is none other than Shemesh, all right, or Shemson, or Helios? All right, or hell. <laughs> who can avoid that? When the sun decides to get hotter, who walks out and says, cool down? And the sun listens. When the sun decides to break the record heat levels, all right, and says that in the year 2023, we're going to be hotter than we've ever been in history, all right, who can stop that? What if tomorrow the sun decides to be 150 degrees? Who can stop that? You understand? This is where you're speaking about judgment that you can't do anything about. Are you with me? So when the movie Knowing came out in 2009, they were also studying what was taking place with your son. All the corona mass ejection conversation and solar flares and all of that that they were speaking about in the movie, they had the scientific research centers working on those same problems and equations trying to figure out how long we have. They're looking at the solar pole reversals and everything. Every 11 years, they're checking in, they're sweating, literally. And they're trying to figure out how much time do we have. Bill Gates said he was going to solo geoengineer your atmosphere with all these stratosphere aerosol injections and all these contrails. And they said, yo, how much time do we have? Bill Gates said, let's see if we can build another window, which for them means time period. In 1985, he came out and said, we need more of a window and gave you those four squares that represented the same equinox that Malachi York was able to put out and teach people about when it came down to the moon cycle, the sun cycle, another moon cycle, and then the sun cycle. And they were running from that sun cycle. And they wanted to keep everybody in, what, darkness or under the moon. So Bill, or Wilhelm, Bill, Will, all right, Helm, Helmets, who protect. Baal, Helm, one, who is Baal? The Lord of, what, the disagreeables? wanted to come out and helm or protect his world. And he said, we're going to war with the sun, just like Maui did. You understand? He wanted to war with the sun. And that's why all of these reeds were coming through and said, behold the sun. Don't forget about the sun, like Lahaina. Go look up Lahaina, the Hawaii situation, and you'll find that it was speaking about the sun. You understand? They're nervous about that because nobody can shut it down. They're sending out all these 
uh, probes and all this other stuff, trying to see if they can detect it faster and faster. So my point is this. Can anybody delay when that judgment comes? No, not according to al and you can't. All right. Does anybody know the time? Does anybody know the hour? Not according to the Biblos or the Bible, you can't. You feel what I'm saying? So all you can do is be able to hear the call. And if you can't hear the call, you will not know the day. They came like a thief in the night in the movie Knowing. You would not know that. Your government doesn't know. You know what I'm saying? They kick it like they know, but why they got all these underground cities trying to evade? Why are they trying to figure out all these X Project Solar this and all the Project this and what do you call it with the Elon Musk, Space X and all the why, why, why are they trying to escape? Because they said in Amos, the book of Amos, chapter nine, go read it, it's very important, that they were going to do that. They said that those people were going to try to climb up and lead through the heavens and the hand of God was going to smack them down. And they said they were going to try to go through the waters and they were going to command the serpent people, all right, or the Aquarians to, to smite them or bite them. Literally, go look it up, all right? They said that they were going to try to escape through the caves and they wouldn't be allowed to. They wouldn't be able to go through the pit, all right? They wouldn't be able to go through the heavens or the waters. You cannot <laughs> evade. This is a vault. <laughs> That's why they call it a firmament or a rakia, rakia, a vault. And they know that at most, this realm was operated off of fear. That's why I put out the cold atmosphere. I did. And said, at most, this realm operates off of fear. Okay, the Nessut realm. That's the most power that these beings have. Now, can you change this world? Yes. Was this world set to be changed or claimed to be changed? Yes. That's why they speak about in Revelation chapter 21, whoever or whatever that abode of Darul Islam, Jerusalem, Darul Heru, Salom, Salem, a place of peace, abode of peace, was supposed to be coming down from God out of heaven. That was supposed to be fulfilling the prayer of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, where they spoke about what? And this was the prayer that everybody's saying, our Father which art in heaven, or a higher plane than we're in, all right, hallowed be thy name, all right, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if he's saying thy kingdom come, it's traveling to your plane, all right, or your level within this whole system. It has to travel here, down here, or into your sphere or atmosphere or your sphere to be able to alter it. And whoever those beings are that are driving it, those are the ones who do the choosing. Are you with me? So this happens after all of the turmoil that your planet goes through. Also, when they said that the destroyers of the earth were going to be destroyed. This is in the book of Revelation. The destroyers of the earth will be destroyed. And if anybody is here, when that takes place, this is where you go into the conversation of what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad brought for when he was speaking about weapons that these ships had or these wheels had or the mother plane had or these baby planes had, all right, that were able to go thousands of miles deep into the planet and cause explosions as high as what? Mountains. <laughs> you understand? Know now, remember, we were taught to study that too. Okay, so we know that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad brought forth information about that. So the point is, they are aware of it. They call it many different things, Nibiru, whatever, uh, the city of Jerusalem, all right, the holy Mecca, whatever, the sacred holy hour place, whatever you want to call it, with the biographies of Muhammad, okay? The point is, you don't know the hour, so you have to be able to get the call. That's why they said thief in the night, because it's a shadow message, all right? Only those who are telepathically inclined would even get it. So how would the 144,000 learn the song? It would have to be literally streamed to your essence, to your being, or through your heart, all right? Which is connected to that brain, where you get this whole... Uh, 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 communication or telepathy situation set up from the heart and the brain being activated or being able to rise up off that cross with the Rosicrucian order to be a torchbearer. And what's the point there? Say the name Caleb or Caleb, like you got the Superman, all right, franchise where you say Superman, beyond man, beyond human beings. So you have the Superman franchise that speaks about a being called Kal El, all right, which they'll show you means the voice of God. Because Kal, if you listen to that, they say, all those who heard the call, many are called, called. All right, Kyle, Cal, the voice. All right, go look it up and you'll find that it means the voice. All right, and then you say Lev. All right, so Caleb, like Kyle L, is saying the voice of Levi. Now, what is Levi in Hebrew? Levi is what? Lev, the heart. Okay, so you say the voice of the heart or being able to receive a message in your heart. And you can also say call or call, which is another way to say call. And call means light. So the light of the heart. And when you're speaking about the light of the heart, go back and find the ET phone home image. 
And that's important because E.T. was pointing to the heart, which has to be ignited. But he was also pointing to literally the brain or the forehead of the little boy in the end of the movie. And he said, I'll be right there and was pointing to his forehead. Symbolic of what? That name of God. OK, or that mark of the most high that was supposed to be left in the forehead of all of the ones who were chosen. And you cannot fake that mark. Are you with me? Because that mark is symbolic of your being able to be telepathic. OK, so the point is the chosen have work to do. If you call yourself chosen, do the works of the chosen. You call yourself 144,000, help us do the works. That doesn't mean that you're going to be taken off of earth. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that you'll have anything to do with that conversation. However, if you are of the ones who care enough about not only your species, all right, your race of beings, whatever you want to call it, then whether or not you yourself in this physical form was going to be so-called saved or chosen, you would still put the foot forth to change or alter what's taking place in your earth plane. Now, why would I say that? Because it has nothing to do with your ego being chosen. It has everything to do with your servitude. It has everything to do with your being willing to be taught the things that you don't know. What were the purpose of the redemption? So that they can be taken up and taught in the heavenly planes. And they still have to return to aid and assist in building the new world. You know what I'm saying? So your escape ain't really much of an escape. Your escape is a delay because you still have work to do. It's just that you're delayed from the destruction that was spoken of many a times. We find in the book of Peter by fire that was going to take place on your planet, okay, or this planet. Are you with me? So I know that was a literally. A hey, now, hey, I like when you break it all the way down. I got another question for you because people's Listen. thinking that the rapture, right? The rapture. Yeah. In connection, the Christians teach about a rapture, about us getting picked up, uh, you know, taking, you know, we, we can go into all the details, but the rapture uh, and and what is heaven, because people think, hey, they go into this imaginary place and it's just, yep. you know, la, 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 la. Mm -hmm. Could you break that down? What is heaven and the, and the connection with the rapture in the 144,000? Go ahead. All right. Heaven, haven, a place that is safe. That's what you're really trying to say when you say heaven or nirvana, a place that you don't have to worry about the dangers of what this material plane yields. All right. There'll be no more death, no more sorrow. All the things they speak about in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, it's the same thing that they speak about when it comes to nirvana or the golden light that I wrote down to y'all and explained to you. When you say nor, you're saying light. And you say vana, you're saying golden. All right. Or that golden path where the yellow brick road where people finally get to figure out who the wise is of all of us or the wizard of Oz is, all right, you get there and it's supposed to be that you don't have to worry about all the struggles or the suffering that took place in the material plane. So it's a haven. They had a haven for you in the beginning, all right? First shall be last, last shall be first. They had a haven for you called Eden or delight, the garden of the light, all right? So when you're saying garden of the light, if you look at light as being peaceful as opposed to chaotic, then you would literally be saying that garden is an abode and delight or Eden or paradise would have been where the peace was taking place or what the peace was, all right, or that it was peace. So the delight itself was peace and the garden was the abode. So when you're saying abode of peace or a garden of Eden or the city of Jerusalem, whatever you want to call it, it's speaking about a place where you're not having to worry about all of the worldly troubles or struggles. Are you with me? So could this be our planet? It's possible. It's 100% possible. Have I gone off planet in my physical body? No, not to my knowledge, not that I can recall. Have I been in front of extraterrestrials or people that I deem to be extraterrestrials with the technology that we know nothing about? Yes, but that's only when somebody asked me this before also, when the clubhouse days, they said, where did they come from? I said, they never said that. They never gave me an answer. Now, if I wanted to sit here and kick it, I could have just said Orion or some shit that I would have been able to just break down etymologically to show them that it meant heaven. However, you don't know that unless these people come and show themselves, reveal themselves to you and tell you where they're from. And it may not always be some heaven that's off planet. So heaven or haven is speaking about a place that is safe, all right, without harm and in order. Are you with me? Now, the heavens was referring to the cosmos, which is just a place that's speaking about the celestial realms, galaxies, the nebula, all this other stuff that happens outside of your planet, literally beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, that means beyond the moon, the stars, all of that. 
when you're going beyond all of this that you could just see as a part of what is referred to your firmament or, or referred to as your uh, uh, sky or annual, or whatever you want to call it, shamarim. Okay, when you go beyond that, you're dealing with the realm outside. Are you with me? So that's the heavens. That's where you get into the story where Jesus was saying, in my father's home, there are many mansions. Okay, now we already know his father's home is heaven. When you ask where is his father, go read Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 again. He say, our father who are in heaven. Okay, so if you're speaking about, if you're his family, okay, because there's another family that they speak about with John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil. Okay, so you got different people that do different things based off of whatever their nature is when you get into the etherology. Okay, whatever your nature is, is determining what you're going to do. Okay, your deeds or your nature is interchangeably so. Okay, what he was saying, if you are of his group of family, your father, our father is in heaven. Are you with me? And if that is that place, he said, I have a place that I have to go and provide for you. Okay, well, then they're speaking about a planet of some sort, or they're speaking about literally the craft that has to take you from this plane to another plane or the will or whatever you want to call it. Okay, but either way, he spoke about a place that had to be prepared, a place of provision. That's why I told you go look up the word rezek or risk, okay? And you'll find that it means provision. Are you with me? So this place had to be provided by whoever this Jesus man was and whoever Enoch was, he left and went with them. Whoever Elijah was, he was taken up in some type of whirlwind craft, all right, a chariot of fire, whatever you want to call it, a light nord, okay? He was able to be taken up. He had to go somewhere, all right? So even if you say you're going to heaven, you have to be able to, at this big age, know what the fuck you're talking about because it's like what do you mean if you're saying you're just going to go out there and be in some stars that doesn't make sense and if you're going to say that it's what is the land of milk and honey or you got this type of buildings over here the silver city and the, the jasper and all uh, different gates and you're describing a physical place and if you're going to tell me it's just allegory we got an even bigger problem because you told me that everybody that said the sky was going to roll back and everybody was going to be whole whatever this allegory is that you speak of so how is everybody going to behold an allegory? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It had to be something physical that you were speaking about. So if you're asking me where heaven is, okay, you're speaking about the potential of a place that is literally off planet, okay? Doesn't mean that it has to be, but it's a potentially off planet place, okay? And if we go on according to the scripture or the Kitabu, it is off planet because it has to come to earth, okay? Those beings had to come to earth to establish beyond AD, which I know the many when they say the year of our Lord and their Lord is Baal. Okay, they had to come through with a new dominion, Anu dominion. And that means Anu's authority, all right, or God's authority, AD. That had to take place, okay, which means that you had to usurp all this other stuff that these people set up to establish their new world and buy themselves more time, more time than they were even allowed for. If they were other ones who reprieve and say, yo, you can rest a while, we're gonna delay your punishment. Okay, that didn't mean that that punishment was never supposed to come. It didn't mean that the beast was never supposed to be cast into the pit. All right, so they try to buy themselves more time knowing that their rulership is over. Are you with me? So if you are of the ones who were chosen and you were going to this heavenly place, first of all, how are you going to get there? In your body? You going to jump up there? <laughs> you know, somebody has to take you up. The same way they had to take Jesus up in the book of Acts chapter 1. You're going to read that. They took him up in the flesh. And you know he was in the flesh because he went to the disciples in the upper room and said, touch me, I'm flesh. Does a spirit have flesh and bones? Are you with me? So he had to be taken up or what you call abducted. All right. Now go watch the E.T. movie, the last the last scenes where he's saying, what? E.T. said, I'll be right there. But he also said, come. He said, come. Right. And what did the little boy say? He said, stay. So the little boy chose to stay. But he offered that he could leave with him. Go look up the uh, aerial school phenomenon with those children from Ruiz, Zimbabwe. And a lot of those children said those extraterrestrials offered for them to go with them. This ain't Omari making it up. This is before I was born, 1994. They said it was some black people with hippie hair that got off of these crafts and told them they could go with them and warn them telepathically, all right, about a destruction that was going to befall their planet. And one of the little boys literally said potentially in their lifetime. Are you with me? So whoever or whatever is driving this craft, okay, is the one who is journeying with heaven with them. That haven is with them. Or that city of Jerusalem is with them. 
is either the craft alone that they're speaking about or they're speaking about the craft and also the many mansions or dimensions or homes or abodes or places that exist beyond your earth or planets. Are you with me? Or it's just both of them that they're speaking about the craft and the planets. So that's what you mean by heaven. You're speaking about a haven or a safe place, but you're also speaking about literally the vast space that exists beyond Terra, okay, or Tiamat's atmosphere. And the astronomers know about it, you know what I'm saying, to such a degree that they know that they have to hide it because if they let you know about it, then you won't believe in this government or any of that anymore. You'll be like, well, then we want to get in contact with the people who from Wakanda for real, who got way more technology, you understand what I'm saying, who got way more advanced civilization and, and they look like us and we don't have to worship you and we don't... You know what I'm saying? You start looking into more of what your biblical scriptures actually told you about. Yeah, we're coming mean? around to that part, Faye. We're coming around to that yeah. part right now. Let's do yeah, it. We're coming around. Yeah, yeah, we're about to say it. We're about to get ready to say that part right now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, done with y'all. We know that. Uh, man, I'm going to tell you. New Nubians about to find out they've been around for a minute. I'm talking about mm -hmm. built trillions of years. Mm -hmm. And you already was advanced past yeah. way what you is now. It's, ex, it's Nubian extraterrestrials who are way advanced more than Earth. And some of them run this shit, like the Natharus and the Anarchies. And mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you another question, but, but let me say this for the people that saying the Anarchies and the Natharus are different. Man, mm -hmm. Anarchies, Natharus are on the mothership Nuru. Trust me. And the, the difference is the Anarchy, I've seen them. I've seen what's the difference, man. It's a, my, the shit I'm about to put out it's, it's like I'm, I'm about to go to another level, but the Natharus they don't grow beards. The Anarchies grow beards. That, that's the difference. And when you look at the Natharus, most of them they don't, they don't got no beards. That's what I seen. And some of them got longer necks than the Anarchies. The women they got long necks because I because I think they come from mixing with the Nagas, the the Hindus. But I'm gonna break all of it down later uh, on another tape. That, that's another tape, but. Uh, yeah, Natharus and Hindu, Natharus and Anarchies, they're not the same people, but they come from the uh, the Natharus come from Hindu origin, and they might have been uh, like evolution uh, right alongside each other as the, the uh, Natharus as coming from the Hindu origin, like the sixty six billion years, because they because because the ones I've seen they had go along with long. Now I can show you pictures of them. I got pictures of them, so I'm all like uh, animation, like not the animation, but like the uh, AI pictures. I'm gonna show you what they look like, cause I like people saying, "Why you? How you know what this look, look like? How would you know what that look like?" Cause I seen the people in the vision. I seen them, just like Baba seen them. Baba said they were real physical beings, though. That these beings were real physical beings. Who knew it was a physical man? I seen them myself. What you caught up in is time lapse. That's the that's the question I got. Now time, Baba said we caught up in time lapse. Now, um, now in the time of the 444,000, the pickup, cause you saying nobody know the time. Nobody know the time or when this shit's gonna happen. So is it because a lot of people are saying, man, are we in some kind of warp or something? Cause it's like, damn, if we already advanced and been around so long, what the hell is this? Is this like some kind of hologramic test reality or some kind of like a training program or something we in? Because the shit is like something's starting to crack here. Some thought like the reality's starting to crack. Mm -hmm. Like certain shit starting to come out that make you say, you know. What the fuck? Like, is this the real reality really real, or is it some kind of reality that was set up uh, that we were placed in? So, right. do you believe, uh, based on, do you believe this is a like some kind of reality or something that was already pre-scripted by higher level beings, and we just put into it as some kind of like is to go through a school or training program or some kind of hologramic training program or something? Because what it feel like to me, man, by now that I'm feeling like all this other shit. Right. Like all our, our people run this shit. Why are they letting us do, go through this shit? Why are they letting us go through all this? If they our people run the shit, they rerun this whole solar system, the right. whole fucking galaxy for let alone it. So right. man, why are we being put through this? Like like some kind of and then we gotta have 144,000 uh this and that. Only a certain amount of people are gonna get picked and all this. Why is this happening? What, what, what is your perspective on that? Gotcha. So a word that stood out to me. That you just said was the word warp right so i want to show you something right because i know i remember you speaking about pops and what he spoke about with the time he said your time belt is off so 
So I'm gonna see if they can show you this. Why is it showing up? Okay, is it, put it up a little bit more, a little bit more right there. Uh, there it's just gonna make, yeah, it's gonna make it hard for us on that back there. Yeah. I know the paper probably gonna cut out. So see if y'all can yeah, see. Yeah, we see, we see right there, right there, right there. Perfect, perfect. Right, you, see, you see that linear yep, line? Perfect, right perfect. Okay, that's a, that's a timeline. Yeah, we, we learned about that in school. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I take this line, which is linear, uh -huh. okay, and I warp it, I take something from just going and growing in a linear fashion to growing. In what? An exponential yeah. fashion. Let me see if I can. Yeah. Oh yeah, they gonna see it. it. Okay, right there, right there, right there, right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. From, from where it says phase one, all all the way up to the top of that line. Yeah. That's how something would appear exponentially. Yeah. That's a that's a warp yeah. in the time. Yeah. Now, what happens when that takes place? When you think of the word warp, remember Trump with Operation Warp Speed, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. You think of warp, you think about vibration speeding up. Okay? Uh -huh. You can actually think of the sound. That's a warp. Yeah. All right? Now, when things start warping and things speed up, what you would have measured time by has to alter. And your scientists are starting to say that. The atomic yeah. time is being altered. All right? They have to add in leap seconds, and they fucking around with the daylight savings and uh, all this other leap forward and fall back and do a cartwheel. They got everything fucked yeah. up now. They, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? they said yeah. it's a mysterious force that's moving through your universe. A mysterious mm -hmm. force. They won't say that it's God. It's too ambiguous. It's too broad. And it will admit too much. Okay? That they've been omitting. That they don't have control over any of this. And what they think is set in stone is changing by the day. So you have these mm -hmm. clocks watches that go based off of atomic time and every time the atoms in your reality shift so does the time have to shift that's being recorded by these atomic time clocks or what is being logged mm -hmm. by the utc or the universal time clock to mm -hmm. say that this is really what they can agree that time is it's is is it's 10 17 eastern standard time based off of what we agree this is what they basically say but it's going based off of literal lunations and cycles mm -hmm. And when those lunations start to speed up, like what happened in the year 2021, all right, in the year 2020, 2022, and even this year, you had days that went faster than what anybody was able to observe in the past, on history. Yeah, yeah, right. Since 1972, they've been adding on leap seconds and trying to see how can we keep up with this time. So what takes place when it's unpredictable? You don't know whether or not the Earth is going to spin for approximately... 23 hours and 59 seconds, okay? Or if the earth is going to spin for 23 hours, you understand? And, or, or, or 23 hours, 59 minutes, or 23 hours and the other 59 minutes is gone. But what does that mean, though? That means that if something is speeding up, something is heating up. This is the breakdown that I gave people years ago. Mm -hmm. If something is speeding up, it's heating up. And if it's heating up, if you call something to heat up, scientifically speaking, it will expand. All right? Now, look mm -hmm. at the word exponential. You'll see the word expand in it. All right? And when mm -hmm. something expands, it does warp. It has to warp, especially when you're dealing with something that's operating in a spherical sense, like your universe. Mm -hmm. Go look up what the shape of the universe is, and they'll tell you it's a, it's a sphere. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the solar system, whatever you want to call it, all of this is operating within valves and cycles and pieces and compartments that work like a clock within itself. But why? Because time and space are a continuum, like I've broken down to you before. Mm -hmm. Time and space are a continuum. They're one and the same. So if things are heating up around you and the molecules are starting to be able to spread and stretch apart, and even scientists are baffled at the fact that they look out 14.6 billion years into space, or they study the cosmic microwave background, all right, or the CMB, they start saying, well, it seems like nothing can move faster than the speed of light based off of what we calculated, yet the universe appears to be expanding faster than the speed of light. This is where you get into yeah. true science of relativity because it only appears to you that that realm is expanding faster than the speed of light because you have yet to approach the speed of light and maintain that speed to even be able to step beyond it. Because if you were to, as a human being, reach the speed of light, 
you would freeze. You understand? You you literally to the observer would freeze. And the only one who would be able to identify with self beyond the speed of light would be you. So what happens when you get past the speed of light as a human being and you find out that it starts over and you're going zero miles per hour after you reach the speed of light? You're just in another universe. You're in another dimension. The last thing somebody saw of you was that you stood still. And let me see if I can help you understand it further and you'll get to why it's being merged in with time and the warp thereof, right? If somebody were to stand at point A, which is in the center of a NASCAR track, all right, from the flat plains uh, point of view, okay? You're standing at point A right here in the center, all right, of a NASCAR track. No matter how many times these cars go around, all right, if that car continues to speed up, you'll still be able to see it. But after a while, if it goes too fast, you literally will see this, which is nothing. Are you with me? So that image of whatever that car was would disappear. Is it still there? To you, it isn't because per your observation, this object has disappeared. This is the science of relativity when it comes to not only time, space is also relative. Your viewpoint, listen to what you asked me. You say, what's your point of view? Everybody has a point of view. Everybody literally has a line of sight. Your point of view is from wherever you are, wherever you are in the world. And my point of view is wherever I am in the world. And whoever's looking yeah. at this, whatever time is your point of view on the timeline or time sphere and your location, all right, is also a part of your point of view. That's, right. that's where you get into the X axis, Y axis, Z axis of the three dimensional or third dimensional yeah. aspect of time, which is all encompassing when you look at the first dimensional aspect, which goes around your realm to create what you call 4DS time. All right, but it's really one dimensional that interacts with the 3D. So my point is, the reason why people are saying that this time belt is off, like pops is breaking down, and that things are warping, and people say, yo, time is speeding up, and it's getting hotter outside, and the universe is expanding, is because all of this happens at one time. The quickening takes place not only in the yeah, human being, but right. it takes place in the stars. It takes place in the sun. People say, I remember, I swear up and down that the sun was yellow. All right. Well, if you remember that the sun is yellow and you were, and you're looking at the sun and it's white, what just took place was there was an ascension. Because if indeed the sun was yellow, how we used to draw when we was little, because we were we, y'all remember what we looked up and saw? We saw a yellow sun. But now if you're yeah. saying that it's white, then that sun itself has quickened. Because for something to go to yellow to white, it literally sped up in frequency. That's right. So watch this. Everybody was talking about how 2023 was going to go for themselves. People say, y'all, this is my year. All right? They sneeze, and they already look at 2024 in the face. And people are saying, how is this happening? Nobody feels like there was a summer. Right? You can think back. I know we got videos and stuff to prove that we were there, but nobody feels like there was a summer. Because when you were passing that point, time was moving much more fast, okay, especially for you, or much faster for you who are on the earth plane, because that was around the solstice, which operates, again, mm -hmm. like a clock. Mm -hmm. All right, you have your winter solstice, which is like your 6 p.m., and you have your summer solstice, which is like your 12 p.m. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? But these are it's representing different points of time, and the way that your planet is orbiting, it isn't a perfect circle, it's operating off of something that wobbles the orbit, all right, of your planet, or the, uh, the what is it, the rotate, yeah, the, the orbit of your planet around the sun wobbles, okay, on its axis. It doesn't just do it in a perfect elliptical orbit. You know what I'm saying? So my point is this. Because things have heated up in your reality, literally your solar system, your sun is expanding, all right? They might say, oh, the sun will die in a billion years. But the way that time is looking right now, that billion years could be tomorrow. Because yeah. if you look at what I showed you with that exponential graph, this is what they don't want to tell you. They would love to think that they can... I'm tired. They would love okay. to think... This is crazy. You see it right there, right there. I protest. What is the meaning of this? It's crazy. All right, watch. No. Okay, cool. Right there. All right. So when, you look, when you're looking at it, right, just imagine that you're looking at it. That's my point. Don't focus on what's important. When you were looking at the thing, all right, and you see that it's speeding up as it curves, okay, this starts to take on more and more information in a short period of time. Let's say you had the time period on the bottom and you had the time or the space that was being passed over as the top, all right? So meaning you had the y-axis as the time and the x-axis as the space that was 
you know, the time and shit was being covered. All right, okay, cool. Then the further you go up that exponential curve, all right, more time is being passed and more space is being covered. And that number just starts to shoot and take off. It's like doing two plus two plus two plus two versus two times two times two times two times two. All right, one will appear linearly and another will appear exponentially. I hope I ain't really teaching nobody about graphs because remember we learned about that shit. My point is the reason why you stand that it's warping is because per your observation from all of these things expanding and heating up, this realm is literally passing by you faster. And if you don't speed up with it, it'll be like this. If you were to stand outside and somebody were to drive up to you, right, and they started moving at a mile per hour, one mile per hour, you can walk right next to them. If I hit you up on the phone and I say, yo, I say, describe the car for me. You'll be able to describe the car with no problem. Tell me about the logos on it, what color it is. Uh, tell me about the spoiler. Describe all this stuff for me. All right, now, if they drive 17 miles per hour, you'll probably have a little issue keeping up, okay? And if they kept driving, they went on to drive 90 miles per hour, if you didn't have it in you to keep up with that 90 miles per hour and that car with a circle around your block moving 90 miles per hour, every time it passed by your center point of observation, it'll be harder for you to tell me what was going on with that car. You understand? Now, let's say that car is going 1,000 miles per hour. You wouldn't even notice that that car passed by you. You understand? Now, what if you were able to speed up and run 90 miles per hour? Then it would appear to you as if that car was standing still because you will be literally running right next to the car. You understand? It wouldn't be moving to you per your observation. So what does this mean, Faze? It means that the reason why time is fleeing from you, where well, I told you in my book, uh, Rehab, I say people say time flies when you're having fun. No, time flees when you're distracted, okay? The reason why it appears that time is fleeing from you is because you're not moving faster. You're not actually ascending. If you were to ascend, you would realize, wait a minute, it always moved this way. You understand? Meaning it always moved. I was the one who was able to or not able to move with it. But time has always done this. And after it does this and approaches whatever speed is necessary to change this whole realm and purge this whole realm, then it's going to start over. The same way if you got Hot Wheels, when you press the button, the car just get to moving around. Da, 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 da. Okay, when you get to certain points and dips and grooves in the track, the car will move slower. You just so happen to be approaching a part in that track or tracked, because track is speaking about how long something is going to take place. All right? That there's an exponential curve or warp. <laughs> You know what I mean? And that's what happens with a wormhole and all this. So my point is, it's all about your observation. If you were to speed yourself up, you wouldn't even think this is happening. I sped myself up to the point of realizing I've told people for years, I said, you got to stop paying attention to their current events. That's how they lose. That's how they get you lost. You know what I'm saying? If you keep going along with their current events, they nickel and diming you through reality, then you're going to look up and it's going to be 2040. And you're going to be like, what happened? What was all this? Where did the time go? But when you're really paying attention and absorbed in your works, then it's not going to flee from you. Listen, take it from me or don't take it from me. Pay more attention to what's happening and time ain't going to flee from you. Your days will be full. All right? But if you just, da -da 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 -da, who's the next president? Da -da 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 -da, Kim Kardashian, da -da 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 -da, the Shay Room Post, da -da -da, Akbar, da -da -da -da, whoever. Then, yeah, this shit, you ain't going to turn around and shit gone. All right. Stop moving around life like a zombie. All right. And you will realize how other people are moving slower and you want to encourage them to speed up. The green light movement says, come up here. You're going to need to come up here because how, how are you going to be chosen if you can't come up here? Because the chosen got to meet on Mount Zion. You understand? Listen, it don't matter if you call yourself the ones who follow the Orisha. OK, well, then you better know who the Orisha is. Do you? Listen, or who they are. Do you know when you're saying Orisha, you're saying the chosen ones? Did you know the word Sha was saying to be chosen or elect? And the word Ori was saying my lights or my aura? Okay, so Orisha is literally saying there's a lot of different things that we'll be saying. But Orisha say my light, all right? Or Ori also meant destiny. It is your destiny, like Malachi York was breaking down. All right, he was saying, yo, it's your, your, you're destined to ascend. 
It's your destiny, but will you make it your fate? Are you with me? Or will you seal it, your destiny? So you're saying, Ori, my light, sure, to be chosen or elected or selected. When you think about all those pictures that you grew up with, your grandma and them, they had the light over the person's head and the halo and all this other stuff. Okay, it's speaking about you literally being able to glow and let off a glow because you've been chosen and you sped up. The only way you'll be able to let off a glow is if you yourself were either a conductor, because if I get a metal rod, this is important, all right, or an iron rod, <laughs> or a rod of iron, all right, that is literally a conductor, okay? Or a metal rod can take electricity through it. That is a conductor, scientifically, all right? What is the word there? Electricity. What is the word there? Conductor. And if I'm a conductor of an orchestra, all right, then I control what's happening. I can gather people around for this new song to be sang. Are you with me? Are you not with me? Because when you say conductor, you're also saying conduit. And if you're a conduit, all right, you're saying the word conductus in Latin, which means a pipe or a rod. <laughs> so if you're a conduit, people are asking, who is able to bring 144,000 together? to sing this new song. Who can do it? Who can do it? The conduits. <laughs> the conduits can do it. And you can only do it if you are a conduit. Are you with me? And that means you're worthy and way beyond the worth that people would think I'm speaking about because if you know what a do it is, you're saying that something is a penny or you're one of the one cent. Stay with me. This is just bars. I'm, I'm just flexing at this moment. <laughs> you're one of the one cent <laughs> as a do it, all right? Or a comb, a coin. Are you with me? So you're one of the ones who are sent to do it. And if you're one of the ones who can't do it, then you're going to be a conductor. And a conductor is one that guides or conducts people. You have work to do. You're not just chosen for no reason. So why is it important that you pay attention to that? Because they spoke about the one who was going to be able to lead the nations with a rod of iron. Are you with me? And that rod of iron is speaking to your ability to lead the nations. And the Messiah or the Lamb was beheld standing there in the book of Revelation chapter 1. They said, I behold, what? Or I look and beheld a Lamb. And it stood, or they stood on Mount Sion, along with the 144,000 who are the elect, the Orisha, or the chosen ones. Are you with me? And if this Lamb was there in the presence of them, when that song was saying, then you're looking at something that this person was the one who had the rod of iron or that male child. In the book of Revelation chapter 12, you're looking at an orchestra. When well, somebody's able to wave their hands, you know what I'm saying, and do this and tell you what to sing and how to sing, and they can orchestrate whatever that new frequency or resonance was going to be. Are you with me? So go read Revelation chapter 2, and you'll hear what I'm saying. Revelation chapter 2, verse 27, where they were speaking about that same rod of iron. You're going to lead the nations like the potters. I was saying you're going to lead the nation with that rod of iron, okay, as a vessels of a potter is what they said. OK, and that's the point that once you become a conductor yourself, you operate like Jesus. Now, what's so interesting is that Jesus said, take up your cross and walk with me. Now, ask phase one, what was that cross? And he'll tell you a star rose, star rose and star rose is a pole or a rod. Are you with me? So you take up your own cross. And now a lot of people confused. I thought it was the T. No, that's the mystic tower. That's a whole different conversation. The star rose was a pole. Are you with me? That's why I said, put down your fishing rods and become what? Take up your cross. Walk with me. Become fishers of men, a conductor. Now, when you find out that the conductor word literally ties into the elect word, then it starts making sense what we've been saying to you. Because you got breakdowns of 144, but it never dawn on you or light on you did it ever come to you that when you say 144 if you were to use the numerology of the words or the let or the numbers you'll get add 144 add what is add to add now if i add something what am i doing i'm literally bringing things together putting things together electing or choosing and conducting a group of beings or the added ones and bringing them together. Matthew chapter 6, verse 32, what do we say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, when we said the kingdom of God, 
and his righteousness. Where did we say the kingdom of God was? The kingdom of God is within you. All right? Now, once you've activated that heart and you've ignited it and that spark is moving through you as a conduit of all of this energy, because you can't do it, all right, when you decide to it's a whole different conversation, you start to glow and let off a crown or a Quran. Listen, I know we can't say the word, <laughs> but you let off something because another word for that word is to say a glow. All right? When something is a conductor and is able to take in all this electricity and start to glow like a light bulb, that glow around it is called the, the word you were not able to say. Are you with me? And that means that that filament that's inside of your light bulb sped up. And now you're glowing and you're letting off an aura or an ori, all right? Or ore or or. Let's look at it. O-H-R, or. O-H-R-O-S, oros, lights. Or, light, all right? What is Horus? The god of the sun, which is the ray, the light. <laughs> you know what I mean? Aura, hara, all right? Hala, halo, hilo, a glow. Conductors let off a glow, and you're going to bring your light to the world. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You feel what I'm saying? So if you're of the chosen ones, this is what we do. So what light are you bringing to the world? Are you going to bring the red light or the green light? And then once you bring that green light, are you going to leave them there? Okay? Are you going to usher them toward the crown light, which is that purple? Why is it important? Because we're speaking in terms of what? The heart, the green. Go look up again what the unstruck word was, anahata. Anahata. All right? So it brings you around to a word, orisha. Okay? Which is speaking of the light beings. Orisha. All right? Or ari isha. Ari sha. And there's another word in Sanskrit, arista. Arista. Phonetically, they sound the same. But arista was a word that meant unhurt or secured or safe. And in the movie, knowing what he said, he said, Caleb's safe. Go watch it. They said, this isn't the end, son. Ask, where's Caleb? He said, Caleb's safe. Are you with me? Arista. Arisha. Why does it happen like that? It's supposed to. When you say the word Ari, what are you saying? You're saying move towards something or to go, go toward a goal. <laughs> Ari, to move toward a goal. What does Asta mean? It means something that has a purpose, a desired purpose, something you're supposed to do. So if you're of the Arista, go look at what I'm telling you. Make me a truth teller. If you're a part of the chosen ones or the Arisha, the Aristas, all right, but then your point is you're going to move toward whatever that purpose is. You won't have a choice. Well, you have a choice, but you're going to do what you know you have to do. You're of the knowing at that point. Are you with me? You're going to do what you're supposed to do. You with me? So if you're saying that you bring your light to the world and you know that some people are bringing false light because they had to tell you about a true light, well, then it gets to the conversation and say that once that heart is turned on, all right, you have to know that those images that they show you of a man called Christ standing there with a red light glowing in his chest is the image of the false light. Are you with me? That's the red light. Because if you go and look up the chakra color for the heart, it is green. And as arista means unhurt, so does anahata mean unhurt. So if they're speaking about something being unhurt, then they're speaking about a point in which you will be healed from all of the things that took place in your plane. You will literally be redeemed from the earth or brought up out of the dark world. Now, after that healing takes place, then what's next? You have to move up to the crown. Are you with me? And that's why I'm explaining to you. It's important that you remember that all of these words show you toward the electrification of the self. There was that song that we brought up. Uh, what was it? Elevators with Andre 3000. Well, I reminded y'all that, first of all, Andre and Big Boy got the same name in their name, Andre, which is a warrior. Are you with me? But they were speaking about in the song Elevated Me and you, your mama and your cousin too. They were leading themselves or leading people to Tom Array. All right? Like Ross Search said, well, I'm going to take you straight to Tom Array. He led people to, they were leading people to the Holy Land, literally, or Jerusalem. So the Tom Array was heaven on earth. I was there, so you can't tell me anything other than that. All right? But the song was called Elevators. Why? Now, let's look at the word L. L means God. 
Correct? Hebrew. L. Everybody should be caught up on that. What do we say Lev was? Lev or Leb, Hebrew, is heart. So you have the God, the heart. And what is Vader's? Well, all you have to do is say Ator or Atorah. Elevator, Ator. All right, say El God, Lev, Heart. Tor, Atora is speaking about the crown. Go look it up. <laughs> so if you wanted to reach God or El, this is the elevator build up. If you wanted to reach El, you have to be able to activate Lev, the heart, and the crown. So the song is called Elevator. Are you with me? I, I know you, I, somebody got to be here. So the point <laughs> being, if you're of the chosen ones, time isn't going to flee from you. They said they would cause the days to be shortened on behalf of the elect, for the very elect's sake. Those days should be shortened. Now, if you ask me who did it, who shortened the days, I can't tell you a name of anything other than to say God, okay? Because I don't know who is behind that level or that lever to be able to pull it and say we're going to speed it up now. I don't know that, but your scientists can't agree on what it is either. So it has to be, again, some type of mystery. And you know, anytime it's a mystery, they're either omitting some shit, okay, because they don't want to admit it, or it's something that literally eludes them. They do not know how this is taking place. When their science says light moves as fast as this, and after that, don't anything move faster, but this reality beyond what we're able to see, and you got to also factor in the parameters of what they refer to as dark matter, which makes up 96% of your whole universe according to what they said, which I don't know how you can chart some shit you can't even understand. They say that your observable universe is 4%, and the rest of it is 96%, which is called dark matter, meaning they don't know what the fuck it is. And all I'm asking is how the fuck did you measure and chart some shit that you can't even understand? You know what I'm saying? But they won't tell you that what they're really saying with dark matter is that whatever this formation is in your universe is so massive that light can't even escape it, like a black hole. And then they also charted that there are things that appear to be affecting other celestial bodies like stars, all right, wings of the spiral galaxies that they're looking through these telescopes and they can't see the object, but they can see the effect of the object weighing in, all right, as if some shit was moving past and causing these things to move. They say they're looking at things that are closer toward their sun, all right, S stars and planets closer toward the sun typically move faster than the stars that are on the outside of the sun. You know what I'm saying? Or the planets that are further away from the sun. Because the ones that are closer to the sun are closer to the center of gravity. But then they're looking at some of these galaxies and they're saying, why are the wings of these galaxies having bodies, celestial bodies like stars and planetoids, that at these points, they start speeding up and then they go back to their normal speed as if something pulled it along. So it's a, another thing that baffles them. So they just say, oh, it's dark matter. They don't want to say that's a cloaked ship. They don't want to say that that ship has technology. That, and again, we were speaking about not just a ship. Malachi York said it was a planet-sized ship. You understand? So you have to think of how big motherfuckers had to be or how much technology motherfuckers had to have access to to build a ship that was as big as a planet. <laughs> Makes you think about men in black. When they showed you they were playing with your planets like they were marbles. Are you with me? <laughs> it's a whole different conversation. My, my point is this. If you really lock in and stop listening to this bullshit that's happening, all these current events is distractions, and that's all it is to take you off of your track, you'll lose track of time. You start doing your own works and focusing and putting your mind to it, and you start activating yourself, you're able to ascend or go up that elevator, then you're going to reach God by activating your heart and your crown. Go look up what I told you. L means God. Lev means heart, and Atara means crown. That is El Lev Atara, elevators. Are you with me? That's how you would say. Same thing Jesus said, same thing they showed you in all of the ascended master schools, Rosicrucianism, all of that. It's about activating that heart and activating that crown. All right? That's the telepathic self becoming in contact or coming in contact with the soul version of you. And remember, the true light is green, not red. What else y'all got for me? I'm listening. Hey, we got about 10 minutes, man, because I want to make it I want to make it quick on 144 on the dot. 144, mm. so we can lock this alchemy in. Mm. Uh so we got to talk about 10 minutes. Hey, tell All them right. hey, uh tell them about your uh the fundraiser you got going for the 140k. I mean 144,000 fundraiser. We already told them about the books already. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to be back again, y'all, probably on Monday, because Sunday I got to do something on Monday. Mm. We're going to be back again. Oh, we can come back Saturday. Uh, I mean, Saturday. We can come back. I mean, it depends on when you're free. We'll talk about that later. But, right. yeah, just tell them about the front rate. We got like about 10, nine minutes till we get out of here. I want to drop it on 144 on the dot. Right. Yeah. It's crazy that you said that because it's 1044 right now. Yeah. Right? So look at it like this. The fundraiser that we're working on right now, I've been I've been on their ass. The industry yeah. ain't had no break. Uh, none of these so-called leaders ain't had no break. They they feel and hear the effects of the true light. Anybody that beholds my voice and they didn't know what it was, they didn't even know we still had it out here like this. All right. And for me to be 25 year old, everybody, they feeling what I'm doing. So I'm putting fire on the people that I, I a lot of brothers coming to me and say, yo, you you encourage me to get back out. I said, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Because why? Where did you go? The fight never stopped. We, we the platform continues to grow. Then listen, I just put like I've told y'all about put Melika York video up on my page while I was speaking about the one three five was also equals nine the same way one four four does. Mm-hmm. I spoke about one hundred and thirty five years that he was uh, sentenced to for speaking the truth. That has five hundred thousand views. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. on Instagram? So that went major, and that means five hundred thousand people who may not have known all right who he was was able to look and see. And behold the lamb. Right, All right, right, they saw his face. Does that mean something? Yes, it does. It means that when phase one said the whole world gonna know, if you go listen to the right. phase one pop mm-hmm. song, P O P S, the whole world gonna know, he meant that. Mm-hmm. You understand? He meant they're going to know. So that mm-hmm. means that if you look at what he's doing, did he get a higher platform and start switching up? Did he get a mm-hmm. higher platform and try to get with Universal Music Group or whoever the fuck, Sony and them? And say, y'all, come on! I just want to get this deal. I'm gonna get it. What I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna sneak in and play the game. Bullshit! Did he do yeah. any of that? No. He still no. been on that same walk. So all I'm telling yeah. the people to do and asking, really, I'm rather asking that you walk with me on this. Is everybody come together and just raise 144,000? Like he said, we're gonna lock the alchemy in in 144, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So then we can all come together, raise 144,000 by April. That's the mm-hmm. goal. Okay. And the point is, we have you as the label, the people of the label. That literally said, we rock with phase one. We root for him. Can't none of y'all niggas out rap him. All right. Ain't nobody finna out teach him. All right. He got the whole shit on lock. We we he he the player right now that we saying can reach the masses. He the one that we put forces behind and energy behind and say if anybody needs to get to these these sheep that you call sheep, all right, or even these wolves that you call wolves. If anybody needs to reach them and bring them in through any light, it needs to be the one who possesses the green light at this time. Literally holding the green light movement in his palm, and we back him. They can't stop you from backing me. Are you with me? Now you don't have to wait for me to put out no documentary. You don't have to wait for me to say, "All right, y'all, I'm trying to do this." You can literally say right now, "We put him in the game." Just look at the works that I've done up to this point. I have never strayed away from right knowledge ever. Go back. I've never strayed. I literally started at five years old. When my Umi was showing me people like Tupac and the rest of these people who was doing the music, and I said, yo, the way that they got the fame and all this other stuff, I can reach the people and, and bring them to right knowledge. I can help this whole planet out if I have a platform like that. I was five years old when I decided this is what I was going to do. From that moment of decision, when we were standing on Tom Array, after they had blocked off the land, they wouldn't let nobody come on, and they had all the, you know, the, 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 the feds and all the people that were scouting and da 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 we saw the statue of Yeshua laid out on the ground, nailed into the ground on Tom Array. All right. And my mother's statue, who was telling that statue, was also pushed over and left on the land. And I looked over and I saw my mother crying, like I say in the pop song, when I said she just held my hand because she couldn't stop. When I said, Omi, why are you crying? Right. I literally saw her. She couldn't even respond to me. The tears was rolling down. And I told her when I was five years old, standing on Tom Array, after they took our land, I told her, Omi, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. And if you can't hear what I've been saying and see what I've been doing and think that I'm fighting, I don't know what you're looking at. So all I'm saying is I'm asking that just help me. All right. It's, I've, I've yet to make certain announcements, but people have stepped in. They've really been helping me recently. All right. Including the brother, your elder and the rest of you people who come and y'all lock in and you like the videos that are the stuff. You share it and you send donations, you get the books. Y'all been helping me. I don't think I don't have any help. All I'm saying is let's they, they cannot stop y'all from doing this. They can't stop y'all from saying we got something in phase one. They can't stop you from noticing it while I'm here saying we finna help this nigga. We finna help him. 
We his label. We say he get a million. We gonna put a million behind his campaign. We gonna put 144,000 behind him. And we dare a motherfucker to try to play like he ain't finna get there. We dare a motherfucker to even try to play like they finna stop him. The people have the power to do that. Even if you think it's something that I have people to say, they send a dollar and say, yo, this is my last dollar. Listen, I'm not looking at it like that. You feel what I'm saying? I appreciate you, but I don't I don't look at no dollar like this. Oh, this is a dollar. They sent me a dollar. I look at a dollar like you, you said, yo, I'm with you. You feel what I'm saying? Or somebody sent a thousand. You say, yo, you're still saying you're with me. Well, that's why I say donation. You can give whatever you want to give, whatever you feel to give. The point is, look at what we're doing. We knocking these devils upside their fucking head. I got energy and time. Let's play. Let's play. And it ain't no bias. It ain't no some devils over here. It's like everybody line up. Let's play. Let's play. And watch what happened when the people say 144,000. When you see what I've been doing to y'all with no funds. No funds. Working off of fumes and ether, nigga, and prayers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you see what I've done to your reality. You know what I mean? All of you who tried to keep up this goat worshiping world and this dark Baphomet ass shit. Da, 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 da. All, listen, all that shit is disappearing and fading by the second to the point where it's happening so rapid, they don't even want to announce some of this shit. You know what I mean? So you see what's happening with that without the energy and current behind it. Okay, then 144,000. Here's where I leave it at. $144,000 to 144,000 people is nothing. You know what I'm saying? If we could just get people to say, you know what? He, he not asking for me to give him 144000 He's just saying, who here? That's all he really said because he was doing this without it. He's saying, who's here? And any chance he had to walk away and do something different, he had it already. We had now 220000 Last time I think we spoke was two hundred fourteen. We had 220,000 followers. The following is continuing to grow. We're going to, y'all, we finna knock these folks on their back. They can't do shit about it. And then we changed this whole realm. You with me? These people stream music, they get millions of dollars a month. All right? What can we do with millions a month? Think about the things we can, I don't have a label that I got an answer to. I, I own all my shit. I don't have to answer to anybody. I'm not working up any, I don't have no A&Rs, no none of that. It's all my shit. You feel what I'm saying? I don't answer to a single solitary one of these devils. So all I'm asking is that the people say, yes, stand with me, agree with me. Like the song say, agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. You know what I'm saying? It is his will that every me be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. And go listen to the survive song and you'll understand the science behind that because it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Survival, when I say survive, I'm not saying just make it. Survival, I'm saying after I'm gone. If you go look up what the right of survivorship is, if you survive somebody, that means after I'm gone, y'all still going to be doing this. You still going to be doing these works. You still going to carry this out. It don't matter if I'm here or not. You still going to do it. 60 seconds. <laughs> Hey, I spoke. I spoke. Yeah, I'm I love it. y'all. Y'all elder, the moment that you decided you were going to help me, you cracked something open in this reality that I've been begging even my own hey, man. to help crack open. You feel what I'm saying? People who know, who've been watching and paying attention, and they don't even talk to me and get in contact with me or none of that. When you crack that open and you decided to stand with me, something changed in this reality. I love y'all. Oh, yeah, you my little bro. Hey, you my little bro no matter what. I'm telling you. Your That's dad fact. is my big bro, so it's like we family, my nigga. I'm telling you, like I'm talking about in this life and in the spiritual green, the, the world, the big, the, the universe world. We we That's we family. Fact. I'm telling you. That's a fact. Yeah. So hey, we got 15, 15 seconds. Hey, we love y'all. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom alaikum. Peace be unto you. Why do? Got to hit it at one four. One four four. You got to hit it at one four four.